just one swab of your cheek. That's all it could take to save a life. Someone who knows this all too well is Charles Pinkney. His eight-year-old son, Alfie, has a condition called aplastic anemia, which means his body can't make platelets. Time is running out for Alfie to find a bone marrow match, a search which is made all the harder due to the fact that Alfie is half British, half Chinese, as the number of Asian donors on the register is few and far between. We learned about Charles, Charles' story when he called into Times Radio looking for a way to share his story and help his boy. And I spoke to Charles alongside Yasso Martini, founder of Team Margo, a charity which raises awareness about the need for bone marrow donors after Yasso's uh, daughter passed away of the same condition. Uh, Charles gives us an honest account of the moment he realised the severity of Alfie's condition, which listeners might find upsetting, but his message is one of hope as they continue to search for a match. I began by asking about what prompted him to call us. I want to raise awareness of the condition and how people can help get on the registry to try and become bone marrow matches for people with uh, conditions such as aplastic anemia. So the key message is to try and get people to register and push up the numbers and save lives. Tell me about your, your eight-year-old boy. When was he diagnosed and, and how is he at the moment? He was diagnosed after a lot of toing and froing and tests in January 2020. Um, we'd been going since August 2018 with horrendous bleeding, extreme bruising all over his body, very high temperatures, a lot of lethargy. And we were told, we lived in Hong Kong at the time, and we were told by doctors there after several tests that he would need more extensive treatment. So my wife and I decided to give him a treat and that he and I would fly back to the UK for a week and see my family over here and give him something to be happy about before he underwent anything further and more frequent hospital visits. So that was the start of it. That was his diagnosis. Mm. And when we got here, luckily just before the first lockdown in Hong Kong, my wife managed to jump on a plane with our twin daughters and come and join us. So we're lucky on that front. Then the major incident happened just before the first lockdown here, actually, where Alfie had a huge hemorrhage and he had uncontrollable bleeding through the mouth and nose and he was clutching the kitchen bin, just screaming, Daddy, help me, whilst he was vomiting blood. So we rushed him up to the high dependence unit in Royal Devon and Exeter Hospital, which luckily was just a five minute drive away. And within minutes, we had senior doctors, registrars, nurses, just trying to keep him alive. And it was an incredibly surreal moment. I was mopping up blood from his hands, face, torso. Um, my wife suddenly went into shock and went into mother-wife mode and said, I'm going to get some tea and sandwiches to keep us going. And he, But he got through that. And it was actually only recently the senior doctor, who we see every week still for transfusions, said, actually, that day, I said to the nurses, cancel everything I've got on. I'm not leaving this boy's bedside because it turned out he was that nervous that the worst could happen. So that was the big episode. And since then, they've tried different less invasive um, things on him, which is something called ATG, and that didn't work. We were in Bristol Children's Hospital for four weeks in isolation. And then with the medication he was on, he wasn't allowed to go outside in the sun. He couldn't go to indoor play areas. He couldn't go to parks. He couldn't go to school. He couldn't be around anyone. He, he effectively was in isolation. So... And he was incredibly susceptible um, to anything. And an example, one of his sisters came back from school with a cough and a cold. He picked it up, spiked the temperature that night. I rushed him up to hospital, and we left eight days later because well, he had to be on a drip for that time. 
just to keep him going properly. So, yes, it's for him it's been hugely traumatic, and um, basically what we he's ongoing now with these transfusions. It was made clear to us that wherever he starts his treatment, we would have to reside. We decided to split the family. My wife went back to Hong Kong with our twin daughters. I stayed here with Alfie, put him into the local school, and just took him to hospital every week. And they went back and shut up shop. How are you coping? I mean, how's Alfie coping? It must be you know, absolutely heartbreaking for you all, but also incredibly challenging for an eight-year-old boy. Yes, I mean, he's... You never know how they process it underneath, and you try and talk to them. And we've got psychologists because obviously kids are extremely resilient. But you know, if they're that resilient, why well, there's so many damaged adults? So we are very wary of how he's coping with it. But also the way the nurses and doctors deal with it, they they're aware of his situation, but it's also the holistic approach around how do his sisters interpret it because he gets more attention at certain times, and how do, how do we do it? So for him, it's been incredibly tough. He couldn't say goodbye to his friends, his schoolmates. Um, he's now got what they call a Hickman line, which comes out direct into, from his heart, up through and comes protrudes out of his neck, and there are two tubes where they can administer his weekly transfusions and take bloods and do everything like that. So he's living with these things coming out of him, which means he can't swim do contact sports, so it's limiting for him, but he seems to cope with it extremely, extremely well. And is there a cure? Is a bone marrow transplant a cure for this condition? Yes, it certainly can be, and many people have been successful at it. What they really need is at least a nine and a half or a 10 out of 10 match. That means that when the new marrow comes in, the host marrow, or what's left of it, doesn't reject it and fight it. It says, mm -hmm. okay, I like you, you actually work, and then off it goes, it kickstarts it, and they return to normal levels. Um, they don't require platelets the whole time. And so it's, it's definitely a cure. Unfortunately, there is no one on the global database who matches Alfie, and I'm sure a lot of other people. So that's our story for him. We just want to get more people registered because they can, they can save lives. You say there's no one on the global register. There could be someone out there who does match Alfie, couldn't there, who isn't on the global register, which is part of the reason that, that you are publicizing this. Absolutely, and we're, we're looking for that person for Alfie. They are out there, we're sure of it. The trouble is, as you mentioned in your introduction, he is mixed ethnicity, and there are far fewer people of all different mixed ethnicities, especially who aren't on the register. And that cuts his chances down hugely. So, yeah, we, we are looking for that person for him. And if they can't save him, they will be able to save someone else. Can I bring Yasser in here, uh, Charles? Yasser, is Charles' situation not that dissimilar to other families of Asian descent? Is that is that what makes it difficult, and why is it hard for families to find a, a bone marrow match? Um, yes, hello, um, Charles. I just want to begin by saying, I listening to what you've just told us, um, it sounds shockingly familiar. Uh, many parts of it do. My daughter Margot had a very, very different condition, but nevertheless, we had the same rude and fairly clumsy introduction to this uh, this nasty disease. There are only over 100, nearly 150 different blood cancers, and uh, and I'm sorry, I'm so sorry to hear what you're going through. It's dreadful. The the reason my Margot was also mixed mixed heritage, and that was the key difficulty to to finding her a perfect bone marrow donor match. Um, you know, I'm half Scottish, excuse me, quarter Scottish, quarter Siamese. Uh, and the rest of me is a mix of Armenian and Syria. And our children are from all over the place. And so uh, what, what we're alluding to is this health inequality that exists. 72% of white Northern Europeans will find their perfect match, according to Anthony Nolan. 37% um, uh, conversely um, within the black, Asian, minority ethnic communities, the ethnically diverse communities, 
have um, have have that same chance. So there's a huge disparity. And if you're mixed heritage, like Margot was and like Alfie is, then your chances are less good still. And this problem will only ever continue to get more and more challenging because of the uh, mixed generation, this generation of mixed cultures and genes. You know, the world has shrunk. Mm. Um, we have people meeting other people from all over the world. And, and so our, our, the ethnically diverse community aspect of, of, of the globe, of the planet, will just continue to get more complex. What can be done in order to, uh, you know, I, I, I'm ignorant of the, of the science of it. What can it, be done to find more matches? It's, it's precisely what Charles is trying to do. It's trying to get more people from, in his case, in Alfie's case, uh, a mixed Chinese and, and English background to join the stem cell and bone marrow registry. It's as simple as that. And the more of more people that do join, the greater the opportunity for Alfie to find his his match, his perfect match. And, and yes, sir, if anyone is listening and they're thinking of do donating or they, they they want to do something to help, what can they do? How do, how do you give a sample and what, what, what's the process? Um, well, it, uh, go to teammargo.com. Uh, I have a, a post there um, that I put up about Alfie um, with a link to... Uh, uh, to an online uh, charity um, who there are four organizations in the UK that register people. You can be between 16 and, and 55 years of age in the UK in order to register. You order a kit online. It's a DIY swab kit. It arrives in the post. You swab your cheeks, fill in a form and return it. And, and that's it. You, then you're on the register and you, you then have roughly a one in 1200 chance of actually being asked to donate very good chance you'll never hear any further um uh but but if you are asked to donate then then yeah. there is a good chance that you will be uh, you will be you will be able to step in as a lifesaver and rescue alfie in this instance or another patient you lost your daughter margot didn't you to this illness yes, yes that was that was seven years ago we've had eight years of 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 this um this fight against blood cancer. Um, it, was eight, it was eight years ago we started getting organized. Things have moved on an awful lot since then, but um, uh, we never stopped campaigning. We're, we're a campaigning charity. We don't really go out there asking for people for money. This is much more valuable what we're looking for. Mm. And, and rather than just stem cells, as you're hearing from Charles, there is a need for more platelets and more red blood cells all the time. So we, we campaign for donors of all types to join the register. It's something that I knew about blood donation before, and I'm ashamed to say I never stepped forward to do it. I always assumed someone else would do that instead of yeah. me. I had mm. never heard of stem cell and bone marrow donation. You can't mm. change the past. You can change what we do here and now, and we can change the future. We all can. Charles, it's... I mean, it's a heartbreaking story. It's hard to talk about it, let alone live through it as uh, you are. Um, how can people follow Alfie's journey and show their support? What, what can people do aside from what Yasser's just instructed there? Well, for him personally, we've set up a Facebook page and we're going to link a Twitter account to it. On there, we regularly update his story, any media coverage, the way people can share how to donate and whichever country you're in. So it's not just the UK with his ethnicity, my wife being from Hong Kong. We target that. We target the Chinese Western community in Exeter University, in Sydney, anywhere that has a large population like this. And people are donating or registering sorry, from around the world. So they can follow his story on his Facebook page, which is Alfie's journey with aplastic anemia. And we keep that as up to date as we can. Um, just so because so many people want to know and so many people in different time zones, it was just easier to have this flow of information rather than trying to answer 150 messages a day individually. So that's the easiest way they can follow his story. 
Charles Pinkney, father of eight-year-old Alfie, speaking alongside Yasser Martini, the founder of Team Margot. If you'd like to find out more information about how you can register as a donor, please go to the British Bone Marrow Registry at bbmr.co.uk. You can also find support and information on donation at Team Margot. Dot com. And as Charles mentioned, you can follow Alfie's story with aplastic anemia on Facebook and on Twitter, following at Alfie P2021. And of course, we wish him all luck with finding the right donor. <laughs>